I'm on with the priming. Right, we've got a big crack in the manifold. Crikey. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Richard and this is the Abbey 200, RS200 replica that I'm building. So if you're new to the channel, there's been quite a few new subscribers lately. Uh, we're actually just hit 666 subscribers, so I guess there's a few of you that uh, don't know exactly what's going on. So yeah, I've been building this kit car. It was a kit that I bought that I had to do a lot of work with to, to get it right, a lot of work. And I've been uh, documenting the process. So back at the garage today to do some more sanding. So over here, we're working on the molding process of the rear clamp. I'll get Cubes to put in a picture of the finished car at this point so you can work out what this is. But we've started the moulding process. Um, because obviously I've done a hell of a lot of work to this and changed nearly everything about it. We're moulding that so it can be reproduced and selling that as a the finished kit. And then over here, I'm on with the priming. This is our kit sill, our door, and we've got a right mess going on here. Now this looks like I can't paint for shit, but let's get in and have a look. See all this here, look at that. So this, this door, when, when we were making this panel, the, 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 the gel coat, when I was putting it on, it went off really quickly. So what happened was it got a load of little bubbles in it and you couldn't see them at the time but it created a load of pinholes so what I've done is when I sprayed it that was when I seen the pinholes so I've went in with my finger and poked paint into all the pinholes so I've got a lot of sanding to do but it's better than having more filler to do so that's what I'm doing today. So I'm going to spray a guide coat onto this just to help us uh, see where I've been and I can see me ups and downs and that as well so I just want a really light coat and then I know everywhere that I've sanded that I've you know hit it same on the other side I'm not going to bother with the door handles because I can, I can see that doesn't need a lot when you're doing a guide coat, you just want a tiny thin dust coat, especially on white. If you were working on grey primer, you'd want a bit more guide coat, but on this, not so bad. So the bit that I'm working on here has been a bit of a pain in the ass because the the rubber that went round the edge of here, which was essentially part of the original convertible roof, I've now connected a solid roof to it and I didn't want a massively obvious join. So I've never had to do this before, but blending rubber into, into fiberglass. I had to be really careful with, I used tiger seal on it to, to get it in there and then I had to shape the tiger seal and that's not really something that you normally find yourself doing, you know, you, 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 want, you want the tiger seal to go on quite nicely but you're not creating this super smooth transition. I'm not 100% happy with it, it's about as good as I'm going to get it. That has been a tricky bit this. But if you've watched a lot of the other videos, this thing's fought us from start to finish, to be honest with you. So I don't really expect anything to go smoothly because nothing has. And it's not just like problems with the, the original kit of which there was literally hundreds. You know, I've created my own problems as well. Things haven't gone right. And, I had to redo things and it's kind of the nature of it though. To be honest with you, I don't actually expect to get things right first time. It reduces the stress a little bit. If you're trying something that you've never done before, chances are you're going to get it wrong. 
it's not going to be perfect. So I sort of expect to fail on the first go. And then the second go, you tend to overcompensate. You know, like you're like, right, that was wrong, so I'm going to adjust. But you often adjust too far and end up the other way. But by doing that, you get triangulation, you know, that was wrong, that was wrong in the opposite direction. So the right must be in the middle or, you know, there. And so generally, I find that when you're doing something that you've not done before, I tend to expect it to go wrong first time or not go exactly right. I'm not too surprised if it goes wrong the second time, but the third time you do, you do expect it to be a lot better than first and the second time. All right, so I'm just gonna, I've got 180 on the block, 180 grit. Oh, you see those? Once those little patches of dark disappear, I know just by looking at it that it's level. One thing I need to be careful of here is we've got a, a crest there. Now it's slightly sharper there than there. So I'll just be taking that off like that. I don't want to create a sharp edge. So you've got to be, got to be careful where you're sanding in. I'm not pressing on at all with this. If I do go through the prime, it's not the end of the world, but it just means I've got to prime it again, which slows the whole process down. I'll have to wait for paint to dry again. So you can see that's nearly all gone. I've got that bit there, a couple of bits there, but I'm going to switch to 400 grit now, well in a second, just so that I'm removing less material. Well, actually I'm not, I'm going to keep on doing knocking the tops off these lumpy bits and then I'll switch to 400. This is Jonathan, this is his garage, JDM Dino. So he's pulling the fences off that we made on the laser cutter by 3D scanning the, the body. Oh, that's coming off good. So he's pulling these, they're called fences. Well, that's what he calls them anyway. These things here, which we're using to create these returns on the on the mould. And then once they're off, we can then mould up to them. They become the the fence, as it were, and then we can mould up to them. And then that section, the say this part here, meets that part there perfectly. And that's how we form the mould. That we'll then drill through when we'll be able to bolt the mould together. And the, the resin that we've used on this has been so slow, hasn't it? It's, uh, compared to what we, we've been using. So yeah, anyway, that's what he's doing. Let me show you what else goes on in here. It's a little bit chaos, bit of a bomb site, but that's the rolling road. That's uh, what Jonathan does. He tunes cars, does all sorts of mad stuff with them, sticks turbos on things that shouldn't have turbos on. And by the way, JDM Dino t-shirts are on my website, available to purchase. Also, RB200 t-shirts are on my website, available to purchase. And if you buy those, you're helping support the channel and uh, yeah, just helping to support this project really. So yeah, it'd be cool to see, bump into someone wearing an RB200 t-shirt. I've actually got one on today. I'll model it for you later. All right, while he's pulling that off, I'm gonna carry on with this. Right, we've got a big crack in the manifold, in the manifold. and they all do that. And they all do it. So this is on a Fiat they Coupe. Are, they also crack through these bits. Yeah, they've actually strengthened that up, but they still, they still crack. Do crack. So this new one here, two studs going. So that's like that. Yeah. But them should be opened out into holes because you've got two studs in there as well. Right. So at the moment, I Aye, so. It goes like that. Right. So I need to drill these holes out. I don't know why they've made them, made them like that because you can't get these bolts. And the, the, the so there's a nut goes on that instead of a, 
Oh no, it would be a nut anyway. Yeah, it's a nut goes in there. But, I, but so two, the, it has two in the in the manifold yeah. and two in the turbo. Yeah. Right. I guess aftermarket ones won't be like that. They'll have maybe yeah. four holes. But Aye. The standard turbos. It's quite nice. What do you, it's been welded on the inside as well, is it? Uh, it's reasonable. It's not welded the best inside there. Yeah. At least it's been done though, and like yeah, there's a bit of a step on these ones. But I don't know what he paid for them. Hopefully, it's better than nothing. When you look at the way it's collecting the five cylinders, though, it's messy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like as far yeah, it's as not ideal. Like I mean, that cylinder is completely opposed to that cylinder there. Yeah. C crikey, if if that this depending is... on the firing order. Yeah. This is the problem with the five cylinder. These, these come in. Yeah, I mean, it's it's literally just co copied there. the same structure as the well, as no, the it's original. Not quite as good as that because this one comes into that one. Yeah. Part way up. Yeah. So it's slightly better. Um, that one comes in to this one, and that one's on its own. Hmm. So. Not ideal, but what they should have had was a little bend that way on them. Yeah, yeah, it's just to help it flow in there, you know. Probably bring this up a little bit. It depends on clearance. You know. So he's been putting da -da -da -da, new new piston rings. New yeah, did you put new pistons in it in the end? Yeah. Oh, break the ring lines. Crikey. That should be like that. Yeah. Quite a common thing. Common problem. Awesome cars though, they're just really bad to work on. Back to sanding. So getting through this door now. I'm not going through the paint. I'm just uh, getting through all the little bits that needed sorted. Still on the 180. The bottom part of the door wasn't so bad. It was this top bit. Um, that was a fresh mix of gel coat. It was that top section that was the was the one that went off. So the the problem it caused, at least it was quite obvious how how it had happened. So I know for next time you got the same issue here with edges. You don't want to create too much of a, a sharp edge on something. You need to be careful. Always roll off the edges. And you'd think you wouldn't notice it, but you do, it, it creates a creates a shadow, you know, even on something that's all white, it still it still creates a shadow. So that's worked out alright. So uh, nowhere near as bad as it could have been. Like I say, if I had to fill it and all the pinholes, then I would have had to prime it and Reprime it rather. So I made a bit of a mess, but it's worked out all right. Right, that's everything rubbed with 400. Well, not everything. The side skirts and the doors and the uh, the window rubber area. I'm just feeling that there and there's a little bit that I've missed. It's nearly everything rubbed. And then I've got the, uh, the mirrors to do and the door handles. And then once I've got those done, that will be everything rubbed and then I can start cleaning everything up and start and getting ready for primer. Primer, paint. I don't know whether I'll be painting today, time's knocking on, we'll see, we'll see, but uh, yeah, progress, all the same.
that's me for the day anyway this is all sanded dusted off and ready to paint tomorrow i'm not gonna go for it tonight or else i'll be here till god knows what time so thanks for subscribing i'll say thanks for subscribing anyway because i really appreciate it also all the comments i'm quite enjoying all the all the comments and uh people's views and opinions and ideas and stuff like that it's it's good um i do try and get on and respond to all the all the comments that people put on there so it's nice to know that you're uh, enjoying it and getting mentally involved in the in the project because uh yeah it's uh, there's a there's a lot of a lot of thought goes into it and it's nice to know that you're thinking about it too so what to do what to do with the exhaust i can't remember what they were called but uh i'm terrible with names i could go on my phone and look but yeah someone was talking about the exhaust yesterday and what we're gonna do with that we just haven't got to that bit yet you know um it is something that i've been thinking about quite a bit but if i was to put i think what he was suggesting was either put he said like uh, the one big one in the middle or but the trouble is this lip underneath there goes in about maybe probably a good four or five inches in the way so when the clam lifts up if i've got a tailpipe sticking out there it's just going to catch so i have even considered and if you go back to the the like the design video that uh that i did about like the the stuff that i've been doing on the ipad i have drawn pictures of this all cut away and removing those vents blocking part of that off so it comes up there and then taking all this middle section out which would mean that then i, I could have a, a central exit exhaust which i haven't ruled out yet but i'm just not not there there yet and uh yes the exhaust on it is ugly as sin it really is but i mean most of the time you wouldn't actually see all that crap would you but yep the the exhaust will be tended to also another common question is like what am i going to do with the the engine am i going to do a conversion uh, supercharger turbo um i think the the plan is although i'd possibly prefer to supercharge it just for the sound of the charger and that instant like throttle response because i'm not going to be like racing about at you know 150 mile an hour but it's nice to have that punch coming out of a corner isn't it you know in that case a, a supercharger would work quite well better than a turbo but then obviously you've got like the turbo sounds and uh whatnot as well so but i think for drivability a supercharger might work better but a supercharger on this engine isn't as easy to do as a as a turbo so what we would like to do as part of like an additional part of the kit is obviously jonathan's capable of uh, making manifolds and um doing all the ecu stuff for the well for a turbo or a supercharger but It'd be nice to develop our own turbo kit for this engine. All the way along, I'm trying to keep it as affordable, not just for me, but for uh, whoever buys the kit to, you know, to, for it to be easy to upgrade. On those grounds, a turbo kit would be easier to produce than a supercharger kit. So that's probably where we'll we'll head. When you go to a turbo, obviously the the, the the exhaust is involved in that setup as well so without a doubt the the exhaust will be getting some attention at some point so i'm gonna say bye bye <laughs> i'll see you next time i'll be here tomorrow thanks for watching <laughs>